everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing discussions in Canvas. Um, I love discussions. I'm really excited to be showing you how to create them today. So uh, this is actually a two part video. The first video I'm going to show you how to create a discussion and showing you all of the things within the edit uh, mode, like all the different features and things like that. And then in the second video, uh, which I will link in the descriptions below, uh, I'll show you some examples of how I use discussions and how maybe uh, you can use them as well. All right, so let's get started and I'm gonna get right into it. So we are just going to get started with um, creating a discussion. So there's two ways in which you can start a discussion. Uh, so if you are on your modules page, which right now is actually uh, assigned as my home page, uh, what you can do is you can click this plus button here and then add a discussion. Just like you would add a, an assignment um, or an external tool, anything like that. Uh, so I already have one actually empty that I've just kind of created as a show. So then we can just click that one and add it. But if we wanted a new topic, we would just come down here and we could do, for example, discussion two. And then we add the item, which is the discussion, like so. And now this is, again, just a shell. It's completely empty. The other way in which you can create a discussion is if you actually just go to the navigation tool here, and then you'll see here's the one that we just created, um, and then we can add one clicking the big blue plus button that says discussion, and it actually um, will open up the assignment in edit mode. So you can see here we would just do the title, so we could do module one, discussion two. And then, of course, you have your uh, rich content editor here where you would enter in your directions. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Like, what are some important things that maybe you should think about incorporating into your discussion directions? Um, and then let's just kind of take a look down here real quick. Okay, so right here we have post two. Uh, right in here, you can see that it's all sections. Uh, so if, let's say, for some reason, you only want to assign it to um, one or two sections within this course, let's say you have a cross-listed course with multiple sections uh, or multiple periods, and you only want to assign it to period one and two, uh, you could click this Xbox and then select those specific periods. Down here, we have attachments. If you uh, click this, it opens your computer files up where you can attach, let's say, like an article you want uh, the students to read. This is a really great thing to add as well. Uh, let's now talk about these options, which are great. So right here, allow threaded replies. I like to use this one a lot because um, this allows my students to further the discussion and also communicate with one another. Uh, so students will post their, um, you know, answer uh, to the prompt or the question that you give them. And then students can or you can require the students to read other students work and then respond and comment on maybe what they liked about what the other student posted, um, or maybe they are furthering the topic even more, which is great. So great communication tool here. This box is great. So it says users must post before seeing replies. So meaning the replies and, um, well, really the post is hidden. So the student doesn't see any of the student's um, in their class work until they post their response to your question or prompt. This one, um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with, which when you saw when I click it, <laughs> it adds the, the student's piece, um, but it's a podcast feed. So from my basic research, what I um, have seen is this is basically you can add a podcast with some sort of external tool. 
And then you can also allow students to reply in a podcast format. So um, from what I researched on Canvas's website through their community is some teachers have actually created like PBLs with this. Um, they've done like speech and debate with this, which is really cool. So something I definitely want to dive into a little bit deeper. So I'll just leave that there. The next one here, um, when I click it, you will notice it's going to add a bunch of stuff at the bottom, which is practically identical to um, some of the assignment features. So here, so graded. So we have, you know, possible points. I just put 10 for this example, um, dis uh, display grade as points. So we're seeing this pretty much identical to, um, you know, your our settings in an assignment. So we have the groups and then down here, um, which normally isn't checked, but <laughs> I went through this earlier, so that's why it is, uh, is peer review. So this is also a feature in assignments as well. Um, but basically, students can review each other's work and assign a kind of like a mock grade. Um, so you can give them a rubric if you want and whatnot. Uh, they, you know, the grade that the student is reviewing and grading um, isn't their fi the their final grade. You obviously, as a the instructor, have to assign the total grade. But this is a really cool thing um, if you just want your students to you know, review each other, kind of a cool feature. And then of course, basic assignment, assigned to those sections, the due date, and so on. So very simple. Uh, and then this one, if we're going back to options real quick, allow liking. So this is very similar um, to like social media with Instagram and Facebook. I really like doing this with my students um, because it's just, you know, something they are used to and um, and it is really fun. And I don't really use these two boxes down here, um, especially this one, sort by likes, which like sorts the posts by how many likes it gets because I don't feel like that's really healthy for my students. Okay, and then the last feature, of course, is group discussions. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on this because I already have a video that discusses and reviews how to assign group work. But I will show you an example of what this looks like with group discussions in the class that I currently have. Uh, but if you click this box, of course, it's going to pop up with this create group set or if you already have group sets established, it'll ask you to select that group. So I will link a video on groups and collaborations in the description below if you want to check that out for later. All right, so we've pretty much gone over all the features and edit mode of a discussion. So let's just click save. Okay, so this is what it would look like saved. As you can see, I don't really have anything within the rich content editor. Um, so all I wrote was direction, so that's what's posted. Let's go look at, this is discussion two. Let's go look at the other discussion because I have a basic directions outline for a discussion. All right, so I'm back at my home, which is of course my modules here and you can see discussion one but if I wanted to add that second discussion that I just showed you all I'd have to do is click the plus sign and then add a discussion and here is discussion two. So since I made it within um, the discussions navigation it's not going to pop up into the module by itself which is why I actually prefer using <laughs> uh, this feature first because then I can create and place it where I want it initially. But anyways, let's get into discussion one and you'll see um, this basic example. Uh, so up here we'd, you would have some sort of prompt or question or an article up here and then your basic instructions for students to respond is first they need to post their response and they need to make sure of course that they are answering all sections of the prompt or the question. The second thing is they need to read their other classmates' posts and then respond if you, of course, are going to have these two things 
um, as an option. So what's really important when classmates are responding to other students is that they are being thoughtful and respectful. So putting that in the directions, I always feel is very important. I actually, in my class, go into even more detail (laughs) on this one. The next two are really about furthering the discussion. So, you know, they can ask a question, um, they can offer another perspective, but ultimately their comments should be about furthering uh, the topic that we're discussing. So let's just uh, go down here. I'll show you how a student would respond. So all a student has to do to respond or answer the question or prompt is click reply. Now, it's not always um, written as reply for my um, instance or my uh, school district's canvas. Uh, It's actually a post, but you would just click this and then down here a text box opens and this is where the students can then respond. Um, And the best part about this is they can respond not only by typing a response, but you can get really creative and have them respond, you know, with you know, a media so they can record themselves. You can have them respond by uploading um, an image. You can have them respond by, you know, uploading stuff from any like kind of external tool that your school uses. Uh, You can try and have them respond here. Now, what's different between an assignment and a discussion is the discussion all the other students are going to see what they're peers have posted, which I love. They get to see each other's work. They get to comment. And I love this, especially for distance learning, because it's adding communication. So that I feel like that's really important right now. So all they would have to do real quick, I'll just show you kind of an example of what this looks like. So I'm just going to write just something, you know, (laughs) really short and post it. And this is what a basic uh, post looks like. Now you can see right under my um, post, I can reply. So I can click here and then I can go hello and then we can kind of see the difference. So it's kind of tucked over here to the side. Now if a student posts something and they make a mistake, they can c- uh, click these three dots and edit it. So if they forgot something, they can always go back and add it, which I also like as well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, the first part on uh, how to create a discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. Uh, So if I don't see you in the next one, have a wonderful day. See ya.